Hi, welcome back to the channel. My name is Andy the Painting Fireman. Thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you so much for hitting that like and subscribe button. We hit 100 and I'm <laughs> super excited. In YouTube land, I don't think it uh, really matters 100, but to me, that is awesome. It really matters to me. I like your comments as well. I had one comment uh, saying, why do I wear my fire helmet while I'm painting? It has nothing to do with uh, art. You're right. <laughs> it has about as much as Bob Ross's pro had for his art. It was just the thing. I saw my uh, I saw my old lieutenant's helmet hanging on the wall that got decommissioned because it was cracked and stuff. And I put it on one day and I made a video. Uh, painting should be fun. It shouldn't matter what you wear or how you look. As long as your paintings are, are pretty nice and pretty awesome and people like them and they can follow along, that's what really matters. The other thing is, uh, I started painting because of the stuff I've seen on the fire department um, on calls. It really helps with PTSD. Uh, I wish nobody, uh, I wish nobody has to see the stuff that uh, that I've seen. I, I work in a rural fire department, um, lots of farms, lots of uh, major highways. So I do see a lot of things that, uh, yeah, I wish nobody would ever have to see in their entire lifetime. So. Painting does have a lot to do with my job as a firefighter. It helps, uh, it helps me calm my mind and uh, yeah, it, uh, it takes care of a lot of things and I'm just having fun. So thank you, for, sorry for the long-winded answer. <laughs> thank you so much for uh, joining me. I hope you enjoy this next painting. Welcome back to the studio, everybody. Today we have a 16 by 20 canvas covered in black gesso and I put the black gesso on first and let that completely dry. And on top of that black gesso, I have Prussian blue, phthalo blue, and just a little bit of black. I think today we're going to do like a moon uh, in the, like a nighttime in the mountains, moon in the back. And uh, I want a big old grand old mountain, maybe a lake or something in the front. We'll see where it goes. So uh, come up onto the canvas. We've got a pretty limited palette today. I don't know if you can see that. There's my mixture of that phthalo blue and Prussian blue, and a little bit of black that I put on first. We're just going to grab a little bit of white just on the one inch brush. You can use your two inch brush. It doesn't, it doesn't quite matter. This is a smaller, well, not a small canvas, but a smaller canvas. So and just start out with a little bit of white, tap it in there and you have to make a decision straight off the bat. You gotta figure out where the, the brightest part where your moon's gonna be. So I think we're gonna put our moon right here. And all we're gonna do is X strokes and then we're gonna go all the way around and it's going to fade off into the darkness. So maybe we'll go right a little bit more into the middle there, right around here. And we'll see what kind of image we get out of it. Now this, I'm just doing X's to start with. Just around. Don't go back into the middle quite yet. And you can work your way out here. And what you can do is Move your brush in a circular pattern. It'll make it look like there's distant clouds way, way in the back. Way in the back, there's some clouds that might be catching a little bit of that moonlight. You just want to twirl it around. Usually we go X's, but this time we're going to twirl around. We're going to put some mount or uh, some uh, bigger clouds in the front. Same with this side. You can twirl it around. We'll blend it out to after. But you want to, you don't want to go back into your middle quite yet. Okay, you can wipe off your, br your brush. And I just wipe it on a, just a, a paper towel or shop towel. Go in, grab some more white. You don't necessarily have to clean your brush every time. You can get away with just wiping it off. And let's go right back in here again. And we'll go around. Brighten a few things up. And like I said, you could swirl it around if you want. Now you don't want to go too bright going out to the outside. You want your brightest part right in here. So you can press a little harder in places. Swirl it around. Be really free with your, with your paintbrush today. Really free with it. I also, I forgot to mention, I also put down a a little bit of a little bit of liquid clear on it just to make it uh, just to make the paint flow just a little bit better and once more we'll go 
Maybe I want it brighter down here. We'll blend all that out in a minute. So we'll get rid of all that kind of... All the brush strokes will go away in a minute here. And like I said, we'll put some big old clouds in somewhere. Be really free with your brush. Just circles. Just move it around. We'll blend it all out in a minute. All right, that looks about right. And we can take our big brush, clean and dry. And we can go ahead and start blending some of this out. Just blend that sky. You want your dark spot still in there. You want to keep that light spot. That's where that moon's going to be sitting. And I'll show you how to do a moon in a minute. Twirl it around. Just blending out, blending out that sky. Deep, deep in the mountains, kind of. If you see a hair, if you, like, sometimes your hair comes off the, the brushes here. I got a little piece here. All you have to do is take your brush, lift it straight off, and get rid of it. There you go. Hair is gone. And you'll find that the older your brushes get, the more kind of, they kind of fall apart almost. And you can go gently across. And step back, you can have a look and see. I think maybe I want it a little bit brighter on this side here. So just take, take your white again. Start in the middle. And we're just gonna go out this way a little bit more. I just kinda want it a bit brighter out this way. Just to even it out a little bit. There we go. And once again, take your big brush. Try not to go into the center too much. And you can go gently across. All right, that looks pretty good. Now for our moon, what we can do is, all you have to do is take a little bit of paint on your finger. <laughs> it seems weird, but you can finger paint too with oils. So just take a little bit of, little bit of paint on your finger, go right in here, right in the brightest spot. And you can make your moon as big as you want it to be. Wipe that off. And I gotta wash my brush again, sorry. Once again, I washed it in odorless paint thinner. So if you're working inside, old odorless paint thinner is the way to go. And you can gently, very gently, let's dry that off a little bit. Just gently go across. your moon. Just little X strokes. Don't press too hard. And if you want your moon brighter, you can go ahead, take some of that white again, brighten it up a little bit. You can make this as big as you want. Another thing you can do is you can take your brush or your uh, knife and go right across it. If you don't like what you're looking at, which I didn't. And we can just blend that out again. So if you make a mistake, you, there's always ways to fix it. Always, always ways to fix it. And I didn't like the shape of that moon. I thought maybe it was a little bit too big. Just go back. Go back with it. Make a circle. And 
and my moon ain't working out too good. So let's do it again. <laughs> like I said, if you don't like, if you don't like what you see, you can just go back. We lost our white white spot, so let's go back here. Brighten that up just a little bit, and we'll drop that moon in. We'll try third try is lucky, right? Maybe is that what it is? That's the thing. Third time's a charm. All right, let's go one more time. One more time. There we go. I think we got it this time. Clean off your brush. And very, very gently. Very gently. There we go. Third time's a charm. That's okay. You know what? We, uh, we're not all perfect. We don't make those moons. <laughs> we don't make those moons right the first time. So that's okay. As long as it's there, we know it's there. All right, let's take our big old fan brush. I got all these brushes kind of in my way here. All right, let's take a fan brush. We're gonna just load up some white, plain old white, titanium white. And I think we're gonna put, we're gonna kind of frame this, um, frame this moon here. So you take your, take your, fan brush just the corner we can make some big old clouds wipe it off take some more of your paint on this side here maybe it comes under the moon here I just want big old clouds today Big old clouds. There we go. Another one. You can put as many clouds as you want. There's no uh, there's no limit. There's no set amount that anybody anybody says you need to put in there. And these will darken these up when we blend them out. And with my, and with clouds, there's no real. I don't know if you would say if it's a shape of any sort. Um, they're, they're pretty random, right? So all I'm doing is taking some white paint, using the corner of that brush, and just making circles. Just making circles, that's all I'm doing. Just trying to frame up that, frame up that moon a little bit. And we're gonna blend these out. We're gonna have a big old mount here, so I don't know how much of these clouds we're actually gonna see. Here there's one. And we'll see where it goes. All right, let's take a clean uh, one inch brush. Actually, you know what? We'll use our two inch. Let's use the big guy. Clean two inch brush. All right, let's go pick one cloud first and just blend it away. Try and leave as much at the top as you can. And gently, very gently pull upwards. Try and avoid your moon. The next one here. And I'm just blending in the bottom. That's all I'm doing is blending that bottom in. And then gently going up. This one here. And just go through all your clouds. If you want to put more clouds in, by all means, put, put as many clouds as you want. It is your painting. Um, when you when you picked up when you bought that first paint set and that first brush you uh, you automatically got your license so you can do whatever you want with it 
You do whatever you want with it. It's freedom. Like I was saying in the in the, in the pre in the pre video or the intro, um, I paint because it helps calm my mind. Uh, it's it's very helpful with with uh, combating PTSD and all that kind of stuff, and uh, it just gives your mind something to relax with. Uh, being on the fire department, I kind of see a lot of different stuff that, you know, regular people, regular people shouldn't see. And I'm just a regular guy. I just uh, joined the fire department and, uh, yeah, I, uh, it's my way of helping my community out. And if you're ever interested in joining a fire department, by all means, go to your local fire hall. If you live in a small town, go there. Put your application in you learn so much there's so much to learn and you're helping people in their time of need and that's what's awesome about it so and sometimes you know the things we see are very good and and you need your you need your little outlet right and uh fortunately i found painting as my my little outlet And it just relaxes me and you know sometimes I get frustrated a little bit once in a while but you know that's that's all every artist gets that way right those look like pretty nice nice clouds in the sky I kind of like that maybe we'll brighten some up here closer to the moon just brighten a few up that are just a bit closer and all I'm doing is highlighting just the edges of them. Just the edges. Because those ones, they would reflect a little bit more of that moonlight. So you just want a little bit extra on there. And go back. Blend it all out again. And try and leave a little bit of that bright you just put there. Just sometimes the moon is catching catching just a little bit of the cloud still. Make sure you fluff those clouds up and then gently across. Watch your moon. There we go. And once in a while just step back. If, uh, if something doesn't look right to you, just go in and fix it. And you can you can spend all day all day making clouds and things like that. All right, kind of like the way that sky looks. All right, time to put our mountain in. I just made a color of just Prussian blue and a little bit of table blue. So I say we're going to put a big old mountain in there and let's do that. Got to figure out where we want our mountain. I think right around here. And I want a big old, big old mountain. Just a big grand, grand mountain here. with a bunch of bumps. Like I said, when you do your mountains, make sure you put those bumps and lumps and everything inside of it there. And it goes off this way. And reload when you need it. So you want to press really hard. You want to really scrub that paint into your canvas. We're going to be taking some of that paint away but some of it will stay. Really, really scrub that in there. Just a grand old mount. Maybe this one I'll make a little bigger. Bring it across here. As we get to the moon, we'll kind of 
make them smaller. But really, really press down really hard, as hard as you can. Press that you can kind of hear that I'm pressing really hard. Trying to create all these bumps and things like that. And then what you want to do, our mountain's going to go quite far down, I think. Add some more up here. Darken some spaces out. I want it super dark. Super big too. So push that paint in. I can't stress that enough. Push that paint all the way in. And then you can begin to scrape some of it off. So you can even take a paper towel and scrape some of that off. And make sure you define your edges there. Make sure that the top of the mountain is always, it is always uh, sharper than, sharper than the, uh, the bottom. Yeah, you know, fog and whatever is down there. Close to the top, they're pretty, you can see most of the peaks in there. Scrape that off. Don't be scared. Scrape it off. You can make little adjustments to your to your mountain as you go along. Maybe this one there. Scrape, scrape, scrape. Can't say that enough. Scrape off all of that excess paint. All right. You can take your one inch brush and I'm just going to put just a tad bit of white on there not too much just a tad bit just so you can see those mountains And pull straight down, figure the angles you want. So I lost my peak. Now, if you did do something like that, not to worry. Just go back in and just make your mountain just a little bit taller. <laughs> just a little bit taller and then I'll fix that right up. I kind of got a little too close with my brush to the sky part just go in and fix it we don't really make mistakes here you know bob ross used to say we only make uh, we have happy accidents right that's all it is just happy accidents so if you do kind of muck up a little bit or whatever don't worry about it And then you can just blend in the bottom. I think we're going to put some water in the bottom there. Maybe some foothills or something coming across. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see where this ends up. A lot of times I change my mind halfway through. And that's the beauty of this kind of painting. You know, you just, uh, you can go through it and change your mind. Just change your mind. If you didn't want like the way it looked or where the water was or how the mountain was shaped, you know, feel free to change it. All right, we're going to go into our white, pull that white out nice and flat, and we'll get our little roll of paint. Excuse me, I found a little hair in there. There we go. Just a little roll of paint. I don't know if you can see that. Just a little roll of paint on the end. And now we got to figure out where we can put some of our shadow or our, our highlights. So I'm just barely touching, just barely touching the canvas. Here's there's a little bit. Just let that paint break. Just a little 
this one here has a little bit. And we can go back and forth from our shadow to our uh, our shadow to our bright spots here. All right, let's go with this big peak here. I told you there was going to be a big mountain. <laughs> Really big mountain today. I just uh, I love painting mountains, so anytime I get a chance to to paint some big old mountains, I'll do it. I just kind of felt today would be the today would be a good day to try try nighttime kind of nighttime version, you know. Why not? And maybe this guy in the back here just a little bit. He's kind of... We might not even see him. We'll put some... We'll put some uh, shadow on this side here. But you never know. He might still be there. And follow the angles of your mountains, right? Just keep following them. So before we get too involved in all the rest of the snow parts, we're just going to take some more white and maybe some of that sky color. We're going to make a, a dark shadow color. Just the darker, you want it darker than, darker than your uh, highlight color and a little less uh, than your original mountain color. Pull that out. All right, let's try this. And you can do a little test if you don't like the color that you've made. Oh, I think that one, that works really good. I kind of like that one. There we go. You can do a little test and if you don't like, if you don't like the color you've made, then uh, go ahead and change it. But I think this one's, this one's a nice one. And we just put the shadows in. There's going to be way more bright spots than, than there is. Uh, way more bright than there is uh, shadow. So I think we'll go right in front of this guy here. Just gently going across, kind of the same way that we're doing the uh, same way that we do the uh, same way that we do the uh, highlights. Wipe your wipe your uh, knife off. Grab some more of your highlights, and it's just white, and I got a little bit of blue in there, not a ton. And then we can go back. Kind of start forming our mountain and shaping our mountain a little bit better. Kind of get rid of those straight lines, right? And if you go down here and you need more, uh, more of your uh, shadow, put some in. Put some in. And I'm just gonna just 
just back and forth. That's really all I'm doing, going back and forth. Just trying to get rid of the uh, straight, kind of straight edges. Just trying to make it look a little more natural. We might hide. We might hide some of this with some big old trees. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see where she goes. You can even go back and put some uh, of your original mountain color in, and that'll that'll definitely help a little bit with uh, kind of contour and texture and things like that. So. Just mixing up a little more of that shadow color that we had. Pull it out. Let's see right here, we maybe need a little more. And anywhere you see, I see a little ridge here maybe. And you can add or take away as much as you want. See that peak just by doing that that peak kind of popped in front so it gives a little bit of a little bit of depth to your mountain range right shadow in the back deep deep in them in the mountains here So you can take, like I was saying, you can take your original mountain color, get your little roll of paint, and if you want, you can just add just a little bit of dark if you went too bright in some places. All right, back to our white. I just thought maybe in there right around here just a bit brighter just a little bit brighter a little more snow there maybe and this right here maybe a little more snow just in certain spots just in certain spots don't want to overkill and bring her out Shadow again. All right, let's start blending out the bottom. Make sure you got a clean, dry brush. And all we're going to do is tap. And you just want to tap just the bottom a little bit. And you're going to go upwards. Now, you don't want to get rid of a lot. So take your time with this. And sometimes what will happen is you'll see little little peaks and things pop out. So you'll take your your knife and your shadow color. I've just seen this one right here. Just look like another little projection, which is really cool. Sometimes that happens, right? little projection comes in there and all of a sudden bam -o. so slightly diffuse it and follow the angles right so I turn my brush out of the way and that projection he's going up that way he's gonna have the bottom just gently up upwards kind of making a little fog right Just gently, very gently tapping it and kind of swooping it upwards, just kind of blending out, blending it out that way. I think I'm going to restore some of that in there. I think it took a little bit too much away. It's 
So just go back if something like that happens, if you took a little bit too much away, just go into your color again, your white, and put her back just like that. All right. I just felt like I took a little bit too much away. And like I said, you just go back there. And uh, the more you could say, you could spend hours of time making mountains and just kind of fooling around with stuff here. Like I said, sometimes you see things and uh, they just pop out at you. Don't worry about too much down here, it's all right. All right. Wow, that's one big old mountain. All right, moving on, let's go. We're moving kind of towards the front of our painting now. I'm just gonna take my two inch brush and I got kind of a, a blue, white, very, very little blue, mostly white. And I'm just tapping it on my brush. And I think we're just going to put, put the indications of some foothills here. Now, remember, this is, this is still nighttime, right? So um, you're not going to be able to, to see too much too many trees or anything like that but there might be a little indication of it and excuse me maybe we'll come right around here and all I'm doing is tapping tapping with this two inch brush just just tapping a little bit And maybe one comes over this way here. Almost like little foothills, I guess. You know, maybe it's trees. I don't know. Maybe it's not trees. And it's going to pick up some of that blue. Some of that blue that's on the canvas already. You can vary your heights. Sorry about the, <laughs> the chair. Tried to fix it once, that squeaky chair, but it just didn't want to want to fix. And all I'm doing is tapping. Nothing, uh, nothing too outrageous here. And look back if you if you need to go a little higher. I think we'll go a little bit higher here. A little lower. Vary the height. All right, and I said we're gonna put water here. So just with that same color on your on your brush, you're just gonna pull straight down, straight down, trying to find where your water lives here. All I'm doing is pulling straight down. And it's most important to pull straight down. Most important. Very important to pull straight down. See a little kind of gap there. So we'll just fill that gap in. Maybe there's some. Doers in there somewhere. Maybe it's a lake in the front. I'm not really sure. I honestly don't <laughs> don't have much of a plan for this painting today to be honest with you and just pull straight down so reflect it'll almost look like it's reflecting that mountain just kind of made it look like more of a reflection that's all see it's very very uh forgiving this kind of painting 
and we can go across just super light super gentle going across we're gonna put a water line in there anyways so just take that liquid white just a little bit on your brush and we can go in here with the liquid white and just highlight some of some of these spots just a little bit of liquid white and leave some dark in there can even make new projections scroll down and we'll uh, we'll highlight those with uh, with a little bit of a with a little bit of waterline just gently across All right, let's take our knife. We can take our knife and same with, uh, use that same liquid white, just a little bit on your knife, tap some in and make sure that when we're doing our water lines, we're going straight across, okay? Very important to go straight across. You can be begin defining where the edge of your, your little uh, trees or whatever that is there. Straight across. And if you put too much, you can just go in and just gently blend it across if you put too much on there. And you can go ahead and put little indications water lines here and there don't overdo this very little white on on my knife go in and fix that a little bit just certain spots it's really random but most important is that that knife is going straight across. If you kind of make it at an angle, it'll almost look like uh, your paint's running off your running off your canvas. And that's not what you want. Not what you want. So straight across. Take your time. All right. Let's get crazy. Like Bob used to say, let's get crazy. All right. We'll take our handy dandy fan brush we're gonna go straight into some black just some black maybe mix it with that mountain color we had mostly black so big dark color and you know what we're gonna put big old tree right there right there big old tree and just with the corner corner of my fan brush. I'm just going to go down and as I go down reload because you're going to unfortunately mix a little bit with that with your mountain color but that's okay. We'll highlight that and then you can go back and if you think you need more branches you need to make it a little wider some parts just go ahead and do that really dark at the bottom try and make it as dark as you can and we can give him a friend right there and this friend kind of hangs out right next to him
like I said, reload when you need to. Take your time with this. Let's go on the other side. You don't want to mix these guys up. Maybe it's a big old tree right there. He is massive. Big old massive tree right there. Boy, he looks good. That's a nice looking tree for a big guy. Hey. Eh? And you know what, we'll probably put some land or some bushes somewhere on the bottom. So you can just go right in here, fill her all up. And maybe just a little one right there. Just a little guy. Fill the bottom in too. We'll put some land here. Like I said, you can go back if you don't think your branches stick out too much or too far or not far enough. Just go back. And every tree is different. I, I don't think I've ever made the same. Same tree <laughs> in my life, the same two trees, right? So trees are like people, I suppose. They're pretty unique. Everybody's everybody's different. So are your trees, right? All right, we'll go into our same color, just some black. And we can just begin filling some of this in. Some land here of some sort. And uh, I, I like when I do it with my one inch brush, I pull in one direction and then I, I use the curved end to the top. And when you press down, it makes really neat kind of bushes just automatically. There we go. All right, let's, let's give this big old tree some highlights here. Uh, maybe, actually, maybe we'll take a little bit of blue, maybe that dark color. Just want the indication of maybe there's a trunk here. We're going to be covering that up anyways. But just in case it does show through, maybe that trunk has some branches or whatever. But we can cover most of that with with highlights, things like that. All right, fan brush. Let's take our fan brush. And we're gonna go into some of our, some of our liquid white and our blue. Just a light blue. And we're gonna begin highlighting our tree. Want a nice blue color. So about like that, just a little blue color. And we're just gonna go put some highlights, some snow on the one side of the tree where that moon kind of taken us. Just Random spots, just a little bit here and there. And on this side, we go on this side of the tree. And then this big guy here. Just you can see that snow just kind of accumulating on that, on those branches, weighing the big old tree down. And 
and we can darken it up same kind of color but just a darker blue and you could still use your white I almost went kind of like a purple color you can go on this side and highlight this side but it's going to be in the shadow this could be in the shadow this side, maybe even a bit darker than that. Kind of want it on the shadow side here, so. You can still kind of see the snow, but it's on the shadow side opposite of the moon. So it's not getting that moonlight at all. And of course, other side of this tree. Just kind of a dark, I almost made like a purple color. There we go. And for the bottom, we can take some of our liquid white again and I got that blue color we can just tap the brush this time just tapping the brush and we'll put some nice little bushes here Do one bush at a time not too many there we go same with this side here Tap it in there. And you don't want to, um, you, you, all you're doing is tapping. I can't emphasize that enough. You don't want to uh, smudge it up, right? We're going to throw some sticks in there and all that kind of stuff. And you can even put a little bit more white and even highlight some of these ones that are just catching that little bit of the moon. This one here. Just a couple of them kind of catch the catch the moonlight a little more than the catch the moonlight a little more than uh, than the rest of these guys and that's just I'm just adding a little bit more white to my There we go. Last, we'll put some sticks and just cut into here. You can put as many as you want. I like putting a lot. I just think it, it gives it just that little extra. And you can go even longer in some spots. Let's take our treetop. You can scrap some stuff in here if you want. Branches or whatever hanging out. And what will happen is it will take some of this white and it will make really neat little kind of grass or old sticks or whatever that's sitting there. And scratch away you can put as many as you want as little as you want you don't even have to do it at all but I, I just like I said I think it just adds a little bit to your painting when you do things like that and those little bit of extra things that'll just make your painting stand out even more even 
more than uh, everybody else's, right? And just vary the the size of them. Sometimes they're big, sometimes they're small, whatever. I like that light purpley color. We're gonna right on the bottom. Kind of blends in there. I don't really like my name standing out too much, so I like to blend it in so it doesn't distract anybody. There we go. I think that's a finished painting. So thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you so much for subscribing. I, I am really excited that uh, I hit 100. So, um, you know, I, I, I'm not sure in the YouTube world that's a big deal, but to me it's a big deal. So I really appreciate everybody subscribing and liking. Make sure you share uh, share the painting or share any of the videos. Feel free to try this one out. And my name's Andy, the Painting Fireman. Keep your shiny side up. Stay safe, friends.